on March 29, 1978, an outstanding doctor told me it was malignant, my lung cancer was inoperable, I should get my estate in order. I didn't even know what cancer was. My mind was totally blown. At that time, I didn't remember that I'd ever known anybody who had cancer. I did have presence enough of mind to ask him two questions. First, I asked, since I was told my cancer was inoperable, obviously, surgery was the only treatment for cancer, is there anything else I can do? He said, we could give you radiation therapy, but it would only make you sicker. I suggest you go home and get your affairs in order. Well, now I know there are two treatments for cancer, of which I am eligible for neither. I asked my second question. Is there any place else I can go? To which his answer was magnanimous. He said, Dick, I'd send you any place in the United States, but I can guarantee you nobody knows any more than we know right here. There is nothing that can be done. With this, he took away all hope. At that time, and that's the only time, that my wife and I completely broke down. We both saw it. And she regained her composure quickly. Eventually, I did. But I lived for five days without hope. And I can tell you that any minute of those five days was worse than all the treatments I went through. Five days later, another doctor in another city said, Dick, you're a very sick boy. We're going to make you a lot sicker, but we're going to cure you. We're going to cure you so you can work for cancer. I said, if you do, I will. And he was as good as his word. He made me a lot sicker. But on May 1st, 1980, on a routine visit to him, he said, Dick, I won't be seeing you again professionally. I thought he was changing institutions or something. He says, some cancers we watch for five years, some for 10, some for 20. In your case, if you have not had a recurrence in two years, you have no more chance of getting it than anybody else on the street. And because you had immunotherapy, we believe you have less chance of getting it. As far as we're concerned, you're cured. Well, that day, I didn't even need an airplane to fly. I know for a fact there is no type of cancer from which some people have not been cured, completely cured. I know there is no kind of cancer for which there are no treatments. There are treatments for every kind of cancer. Everybody with cancer has hope. If a doctor has told you you are terminal, in my opinion, terminal is a person who is going to die this afternoon or tomorrow or maybe the rest of this week. As one pediatric oncologist told me, terminal is a disease you get in the bus station. If a person has months or more to live, they are definitely not terminal, other than the fact that all of us were terminal when we were born. Every one of us are going to die. The idea is to postpone that death as long as possible, and as long as we can have a quality life. That's all important. Statistics are a very misleading thing. We know today that over half of all serious cancers will be cured. That doesn't have anything to do with you. That's just a statistic. You are not a statistic. You're a human being. And whether the statistic for your particular cancer is 90% or 2% doesn't make any difference. There is no reason why you can't be one of those who are cured. If it's 20 out of 1,000, why can't you be one of those 20 out of 1,000? 